Want to add movement that feels smooth and dynamic? Motion Blur is the secret sauce that makes your footage come alive. In this video, I'm gonna actually show you how to master Motion Blur for professional grade visuals. Stick around because I actually have a pro level trick that'll change the way that you use it forever. Let's start from the beginning. What is Motion Blur? Motion Blur is a visual effect that causes fast moving objects to appear blurred in the direction of their movement. This effect simulates how cameras or our eyes capture light over time adding realism to animations and videos. In After Effects, key motion blur effects include the native composition motion blur, the force motion blur, and the pixel motion blur. Let's start with the composition motion blur. Composition motion blur adds blur to moving layers in your project. In the timeline, we have an animation of balls moving from left to right, and we're going to apply motion blur to the second ball. To do this, click on the enable motion blur switch, if you can't find that switch, click on toggle switches slash modes. Now you'll see the motion blur applied to your ball animation. It's that easy. However, we won't stop there. In the composition settings under the advanced panel, you will find more controls over the direction, amount, and detail of the motion blur. Just like a real camera, the shutter angle controls the amount of motion blur. The shutter phase controls the timing of the blur, and the samples per frame control how detailed or smooth the motion blur will be. We will be elaborating on motion blur samples later in this video. And that pretty much sums up the composition motion blur. So the composition motion blur feature has a limitation. It only works with moving layers in your timeline, specifically those with keyframed movement. You might be wondering, why is this an issue? Let's look at a quick animation as an example. I have animated the Batman logo to come in and then explode using the CC pixel poly effect. I've already enabled motion blur on the layer, but as you can see, the motion blur only appears at the beginning of the animation and not during the explosion. The reason for this is that the native composition motion blur cannot generate motion blur for certain effects, such as the CC pixel poly effect. Therefore, I would like to introduce the CC force motion blur. CC Force Motion Blur in After Effects simulates motion blur by blending multiple little frames, allowing you to add blur to the layers or animations without natural motion blur. Once I apply the Force Motion Blur effect, you will notice motion blur applied to the entire layer. Even if I turn off the motion blur for the initial animation, the CC Force Motion Blur effect still provides a blur effect. Keep in mind that the CC Force Motion Blur effect is resource intensive, which may cause some lag in your effects. To reduce this lag and rendering time, you can lower the motion blur samples. The samples control the quality of the motion blur in After Effects. They determine how many points are used to calculate the blur for each frame. Higher samples provides a smoother and more detailed blur, but takes longer to render. Lower samples allows for faster rendering, but results in a rougher blur. It's all about finding the balance between quality and performance. For this example, I will set the motion sample to 15. Similar to the composition's motion blur, the shutter angle controls the amount of blur. The shutter phase, on the other hand, adjusts the timing of the blur. Position or negative values in the shutter phase shift the blur either forward or backward in time, which affects its appearance. Enabling the Use Native Motion Blur option applies the layer's built-in motion blur settings, which can be found in the Composition Settings panel. The Override Shutter Settings option forces the CC Motion Blur settings to disregard the native Composition Blur settings and then prioritizing the values you put in. The CC Force Motion Blur is a fast and powerful blur effect that is ideal for adding motion blur to layers or animations that don't normally support it. Next, we have the Pixel Motion Blur, located under the Time category in the Effects and Presets panel. This motion blur effect is similar to CC Force Motion Blur, but it's more advanced, utilizing pixel data to create realistic results. It analyzes the movement of individual pixels between frames and applies blur accordingly. The Pixel Motion Blur effect will try to generate motion blur on literally anything that it's applied to, whether it's video footage or a 3D image sequence. And what is it that makes the Pixel Motion Blur stand aside from the CC Force Motion Blur? Well, the CC Force Motion Blur can only generate motion blur on something that After Effects creates. The Pixel Motion Blur is best suited for video footage that lacks natural blur, especially when dealing with fast moving objects. For instance, consider this footage of a 3D gun. 
It lacks motion blur because in 3D rendering, having motion blur baked in can be problematic. This is because any adjustments to the motion blur cannot be made in post-production. Ideally, it's advisable to render the 3D animation first and then add the motion blur during post-production. And this is where pixel motion blur comes into action. Now, once we apply the pixel motion blur to your 3D image sequence, you'll notice that the animation now has motion blur, but it appears quite jagged and sharp. We can improve this by increasing the shutter samples, although this will also increase the render time. A pro tip from the Jake in Motion YouTube channel is to keep the shutter sample set to five in the timeline for faster previews and then increase it to around 21 when you're ready to render the final output. You can actually adjust the pixel motion blur effect directly from the effect controls panel or by using the native composition blur settings. To control the blur using the native composition settings, you need to set shutter control to automatic and enable motion blur on the layer. Then open your composition settings and navigate to the advanced section. From there, you can adjust the motion blur by changing the values for shutter angle and samples per frame. The last control option of the pixel motion blur is vector detail. The vector detail basically controls how carefully After Effects studies the movement between every single frame to create the blur. It's best to leave this option at its default setting or increase it only slightly, as increasing it a lot can significantly increase your render time with little or no noticeable difference in your footage. Another feature I find impressive about Pixel Motion Blur is that I can create an adjustment layer and copy the Pixel Motion Blur effect to that layer. Then, in this case, duplicate the 3D gun images and you'll see that Motion Blur will automatically be added to all the layers beneath the adjustment layer. Pretty cool, right? Are you looking to save time and actually create content that stands out? Our templates and courses are meant to help creators like you deliver professional results in just half the time. Need stunning animations? The Swiping Screens Pack and Glass VFX Pack are perfect for making your videos pop. Or give your products a sleek cinematic look with modern film mats or e-prism digital lenses. And if you check our site right now, you might just find a deal that's too good to pass up. From transitions to titles, short form templates, and even a music video masterclass, it's all here, ready to help you create more in less time. Don't wait and unlock your creative potential today. But now guys, as I mentioned at the beginning of this tutorial, I have a special treat for you. I'm gonna show you two exciting ways to use these motion blur effects. The first method is the infinite zoom transition. For this, we'll use the transform effect and the native composition blur. Start by dragging your clips into the timeline and spacing them out evenly by five frames. I don't want the transition to start immediately, so we'll select these layers and move them forward. Next, add the transform effect to the first layer. Now move the playhead to the beginning of the second layer and create a scale keyframe. Then move back five frames and create another keyframe. Now return to the second keyframe and increase the scale value. You should have a basic scaling animation now, but let's enhance it. Now select your keyframes and apply Easy Ease to them. And then enable motion blur for all the layers. After that, copy the transform effect and paste it onto the second layer. Repeat this process for all the layers. Now, here comes the part where we use the native composition blur. In our transform effect, to make sure the use composition shutter option is enabled, allowing us to control the amount of motion blur uniformly from the composition settings. Now experiment with the shutter angle value until you're satisfied with the results. Finally, trim the ends of the layers and drag in the clip you want to transition to, and that's it. Another cool use case is the digital low shutter effect. You can achieve this effect by applying the pixel motion blur and posterized time effects and then experimenting with the values. I also like to speed up my footage using After Effects time remapping features. This extra step enhances the blur effect and you can create a similar effect using the CCY time effect. I hope that you've enjoyed this tutorial and have a better understanding of how to use various motion blur effects in After Effects. See you guys next time.